videotaped at the studios of City Video at Evolution. It's time for Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells you the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. And now here's the host of your show, Paul Stanford and Paul Loney. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Our show is a production of the, our political committee, the Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp. And we are the sponsors of the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, OCTA. That is an initiative petition that we're gathering signatures on. And now I'd like to have our attorney and treasurer and chief petitioner and official ballot measure reader <laughs> to go ahead and read the Secretary of State and Attorney General's ballot title. Thanks, Paul. Uh, <clears throat> ballot title is Permit Sale of Marijuana to Adults Through State Liquor Stores. Uh, the results of the yes vote, yes vote permits state licensed cultivation, sale of marijuana for me medical purposes and to adults. The summary st starts off, replaces state local laws on marijuana except driving under the influence laws directs the Oregon Liquor Control Commission to license marijuana cultivation by qualified persons and to purchase entire crop. Commission sells marijuana at cost to pharmacies and medical research facilities for medical purposes. It also sells to qualified adults for profit through state liquor stores. 90% of net proceeds go to state general fund, smaller percentages for drug abuse education, treatment, and promotion of certain hemp products. Bans sales to and possession by minors. Bans public consumption except where signs permit and minors bar provides penalties. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a very explicit ballot title. It tells you um, everything that our measure will do and in a fairly good way, I think. I mean, the, the wording is kind of stilted, of course, but it's, it's a quite good ballot measure, Paul. I think so. You know, it, it was actually drafted by the Secretary of State and Attorney General's office, and it went through a process where it actually went before the state Supreme Court because of an error that was made in the Attorney General's office. They said it would amend the Constitution, when in fact it's not a constitutional amendment at all, it's a statutory measure. Because of that, it went through the Supreme Court very quickly. It went through in just three weeks, which I think is a record for Supreme Court uh, acting on something in a, a quick manner. Uh, but. Uh, We've, we've got it out, we're collecting signatures, and we need your help to be able to put this important issue on the ballot. Is there a phone number, Paul? There is a phone number, and that phone number is 235-4606. If you'd like us to send you a petition, we'd be very happy to do so. Give us a call at 503-235-4606. And, and what about those who are uh, web savvy? Yeah, for the people who... who uh, have an internet connection or can go to an internet cafe or to a college or university. Or Multnomah County Library. That's true. Libraries, too. That's a good point. I, I don't think I've mentioned that before. But, yeah, you can go to any library. The address, it's right there on your screen. Write that down. They'll put it in the location part of the internet browser. And it's www.crrh.org. That's C-R-R-H stands for our political committee, Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp. Now you have to put this little thing at the first of the web address, the HTTP colon slash slash, then www.crh.org. And you can actually print our petitions right from the internet. So you don't have to wait for the mail and you don't have to come to our office. You can see a lot of different things there. We have information about uh, uh, just tons of different things. Why this initiative will be upheld in federal court and how it was designed to be upheld in federal court. Uh, lots of other things, too. Yeah, it's a, it's a great website. It has um, some of the um, historical documents for, uh, concerning the um, prohibition of cannabis, um, some great newsletter articles um, talking about around the world, cannabis reform. It has the... Um, uh, what's the uh, reefer madness clips on there for people who have this, the more souped up computers that can uh, um, watch the downstream feed of a, of a film clip um, so it's it's all there for you um, but we're you know tonight we're here to help get you involved 
to sign our petition because it's just, you know, every day we see them more and more taking away our, our, our liberties, our civil rights, our freedoms, um, the police more and more wanting to um, take away people's homes and cars, um, which is a great um, thing behind the uh, referendum that was passed, or the, excuse me, the referendum, but the uh, recriminalization of small amounts of cannabis that was passed by a state legislature here and signed by Governor Kitzhaber. Um, part of that is it's going to allow them to take away people's automobiles and cars for very small amounts of marijuana. Yeah, that's just what uh, the governor said when he signed it. He said, quote, this has less to do with marijuana as it does with increasing police powers of search and seizure, end quote. So the governor spelled it out. It's not about drugs. It's about money and search and seizure. They want to come in, and if you've got any marijuana at all, they want to be able to search your car, search your house, seize your property, and put you in their system. It would also, uh, that bill would also require the suspension of your driver's license. You could be in your bedroom. You might not be under the influence of cannabis. They might find it in your sock when you're in the woods out camping or something. Whatever they do, they can suspend your driver's license, and they can take your property, and they can put you in their system where you've got to go through drug treatment. And yeah. so it's, it's, you know, the, kind of the sad case or perfect example of this is, um, you know, one of Portland's, you know, uh, basketball players, I guess an ex-Portland basketball player now, you know, Cliff Robinson was driving downtown in a Humvee, you know, a very expensive vehicle, and the police pulled him over and they found, you know, a gram or two of marijuana. And if this would have pulled over, you know, after this law went into effect, if it does go into effect, they could have seized his Humvee yeah. for like, you know, a dollar's worth or less of marijuana. I mean, how much more ridiculous, you know, do you want it to be? But that's what actually happens out there all the time. Yeah, and less than a year ago, they arrested another Portland Trailblazer, Isaiah Ryder, with uh, just under a gram of marijuana. And uh, uh, he went to court and they found him guilty under... The, the current law and if it had been the new law they could have seized some of his assets and his belongings well they could have, he was in a car I mean, yeah. you know, I think he was in you know a BMW or some fancy luxury car they could have seized I mean the, the police are famous for that um, you know at the recent recent Portland um, hemp fest in downtown Waterfront Park um, let me digress here folks I want to thank um, Jeff and Susie Crawford for of Bohemia After Dark for putting on the great Portland Hemp Fest. It was a, a good success with all types of music and lots of signatures gathered. But down there, the police had a, uh, what they called on the side of it was a mobile command unit. It was basically a Winnebago. And I'm sure it was a seized Winnebago they had. And they now chocked it full of police equipment, you know, a, a mobile booking lab and all that sort of stuff. But something they obviously seized from uh, normally a law-abiding citizen. And it just shows you that you know the um, what's the what's the term the uh, the police um, industrial complex what lengths they've gone to to keep themselves employed yeah you know uh, for a long long time it was illegal for them to seize property but with the war on drugs back during the Reagan administration suddenly mm -hmm. would they allow property forfeitures even though to me that seems to be a bill of attainder and the US Constitution prohibits bills of attainder but they went ahead and passed it and declared it's constitutional. So they're allowing police agencies to seize people's property. And unfortunately, that's become a primary motivation for them, don't you think? Oh, very much so these days. You know, the uh, marijuana task force here in the Portland area, you know, they've been quoted in the local media, mainstream media, saying, yeah, they like to bust marijuana growers because it's a nice, easy thing. You know, they're, they're real cooperative, let them in, and they have lots of lots of things for them to take, stereos, cars, houses, you name it, they take it, and they're, you know, and they're, they're happy to take this stuff. I mean, if you don't have a house that they can, you know, try and um, forfeit, they'll take your stereo and TV. If you have a house that you, they can forfeit, they'll leave behind your stereo and TV. So tell me it's not obvious what they're actually there for. Yeah, they're there to make money yep. and to seize our property. It doesn't have anything to do with drugs. And unfortunately, too often when they seize drugs, those drugs are back on the market the next day, folks. I mean, those guys are out there selling marijuana. I've gone in as an expert witness on a marijuana case once, and they showed the, the, the pictures of someone's garden that they had seized with all these marijuana flowers. 
but when you looked at the actual plants, all of the flower tops were snipped off. The reason for this is that the police agents snip those off and put them out on the market where they can make a pretty penny. You know, marijuana today is more expensive than gold. It's $400 an ounce. Yeah. That's more expensive than gold, folks. It doesn't, and, doesn't make sense. I mean, marijuana grows in the ground. It's a crop. Grows on trees. Yeah, I mean. It gr- Fifteen foot tall trees, yeah. you know. You know, you can, you know, <laughs> and it grows in a very few months. I mean, why should something like that be more expensive than gold, which you have to dig out of the ground, um, deep in the ground a lot of times and destroy the environment. Very, very, um, very labor intensive, very capital intensive thing. And why, why marijuana? A simple little plant should be more expensive. Um, it doesn't make any sense unless you stop to look at the military um, police industrial complex that makes money off of this. Um, yeah. They want to put people in jail. And they want to grab a larger and larger part of the economic pie, and they do that by creating these laws. You know, if you look at the drug laws in general, each year here in the United States, they arrest over a million people, I think, on drug laws. Here in the United States, we have more people in prison than any other country in the history of the world. We passed the Soviet Union in South Africa back about five years ago. Uh, we have more people in prison than any other country, than the Chinese do per capita. Our country is the world's biggest police state. And, you know, that's frightening. When I was a little kid, I, I grew up in, in Texas when I was young, and I remember in our schools in Texas, they told us that in the Soviet Union, those dirty communists send police officers into the classroom to intimidate children to turn in their parents. <laughs> well, you know, they don't do that in the Soviet Union anymore. Commun- it's, there's not even a Soviet Union anymore. There's, communism's not there anymore. But we have here in the United States something that's much more insidious and worse. We send police officers under the D.A.R.E. program into intimidate children into Mm -hmm. uh, turning in their parents and turning in uh, their family and friends for minor marijuana crimes. If you look at the overall number of people that are arrested, 60% of all drug arrests are for marijuana. And so if you take those out, you're left with a very small number of people to deal with. When marijuana is legal, the rest of the drug problem is going to be fairly insignificant. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's just really quite frightening the amount of people we have in prisons these days because you look at other industrialized countries around the world that, you know, the studies show, all the statistics, um, that we're, we have less crime in the United States than the common market countries um, have, you know, that we're, we have less crime here, um, but yet we lock people up at a higher rate. And why is that? Because, you know, because we're locking people up for, for, non, uh, for victimless crimes. I meant to say that we have less victim crimes here in the United States than they do in other countries, other developed countries. And, but we still have, we have much higher rate of incarceration it's because of victimless crimes. Um, we got people locked up, and now you know, it's, a, it's a horrible, vicious circle because down in California, the largest union now is a prison guard union. Um, which is really scary because they're the most powerful union now, and they donate a lot of money every election campaign. And so they what, the, what do they what do they want their legislators to do? Build more prisons. And you know a state can't afford to have an empty prison. How would that look? So they just go out and arrest more people. Exactly. You know, in California and now in Oregon, the state is spending more money on prisons and jails and incarceration than they're spending on education. Now that's frightening. A college education. They're, more, they're spending more money on keeping people incarcerated than they're spending on community colleges and universities. And uh, there, it's just a, a misappropriation of resources. And they're doing that primarily by prohibiting hemp. And you know what? We have the answer. We have the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. This is going to legalize the sales of marijuana. It's going to regulate the sales. Not just legalize it, but regulate it. Currently, the government has abdicated responsibility. The government has a responsibility to regulate this market. Currently, it's abdicated that responsibility to the black market and those least able to control it. Under the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, the government will come in and control the the sales of the drug marijuana. It will tax it, will license farmers to produce the drug, 
tax the recreational sales through liquor stores and bars and taverns, and it will allow the untaxed sale of marijuana to medical patients in pharmacies. And on top of that, it will allow industrial hemp uh, to be grown without any regulation. Industrial hemp uh, can be used to produce more paper, more fabric, more protein, and more oil than any other plant on the planet. We need your help to put these important issues on the ballot and start the real debate. Let's get this thing where we're all talking about it and we stop this war on us. Call us. Get our petition at 235-4606. That's 235-4606. You can look it up on the web uh, if you've got internet access or you go to the library or university or internet coffee shop. You can look it up on the internet at www. Dot C-R-R-H dot O-R-G. Help us restore hemp. We need your help to do that, don't yeah, we, Paul? Exactly. You know, we need your help to restore hemp to its rightful place um, as, a, as a medicine, as an industrial product that, you know, we've used for thousands of years, um, as a pleasure substance that people can use responsibly. Um, that's what this is about, is about, you know, making choices um, and having the ability to make the choice. The government wants to, you know, take away that choice for us. And for why? For what reason? Um, they just want to have this prohibition machine out there um, control things, you know, whether it's the prisons, the police, whatever. They're just trying to control us all. And, you know, our initiative, ACTA, the Oregon Campaign, Oregon Canvas Tax Act, is about um, restoring our civil liberties, restoring our freedoms. Yeah, you know, uh our initiative will create thousands of ecologically sustainable jobs by allowing industrial hemp to be cultivated. It will allow patients to have access to marijuana at cost. Currently, we were saying just a moment ago, it's $400 an ounce. In a real market, I think the price should be more like 5 or $10 an ounce at maximum, maybe less than that, maybe with taxes, 5 or $10. Currently, it's 400 that money's going into the black market. It's going into the hands of uh, the people who are, are controlling the black market. And unfortunately, too much of that control is in the very hands of those who, are, who we hire to prohibit it, the police uh, agencies and uh, the marijuana task forces. They not only seize our property to fund their bureaucracy, but they take the drugs and sell them on the black market and line their own pockets. Our initiative will stop that. Give us a hand with the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. You can do that once again. Call us, 235-4606. Well, I mean, our, our, our government, both the Oregon state government and our federal government, spends, you know, so much money on this, you know, war on drugs or the war on some drugs. Um, and for, for what results? Um, very little results, you know, from their point of view. They, people still use cannabis at a, you know, at the same rate as they pretty much always have. Um, and, you know, what we're saying is education is the way to go. Take that money they're going to, you know, throw away on this uh, war on drugs and educate people so people can, can make a choice. You know, and, you know, all of our founding fathers, quote, unquote, of, of our country, you know, all believe in education. Edu you know, education would make great citizens. Um, you know, that whole time period, you know, in the 1700s all across Europe. They, they grew hemp, too. Yeah, but all across Europe, you know, in the U.S., they said education is the key. They believed that within 100 years we'd reach this wonderful age where everybody would be educated and we all would live in a great life. But, you know, instead we're in this Jefferson's worst nightmare. We have a police yeah. state. Thomas Jefferson, I think, would be rolling over in his grave to see that hemp was prohibited today. You know, Thomas Jefferson brought certain hemp fiber strains into the United States from Italy. He also invented a device to process hemp fiber. That device mechanized hemp fiber production by having a mule drive uh, the device that was uh, uh, decorticating hemp fiber, uh, taking the bass fiber away from the herd fiber. And he said that he was going to patent this device so that he could give it away for free, and that's what he did. It was like the tenth patent granted here in the United States. He said he wanted to patent it to prevent some interloping patentee from profiteering, from uh, distributing it and stopping people from uh, uh, using it. 
So, you know, we're trying to change that. You know, even George Washington grew hemp. He even experimented with hemp and said that he found the art of, quote, the artificial preparation of hemp from Silesia of real curiosity, end quote. I don't think he was talking about paper or fabric there, folks, the real curiosity. He said he had liked to have more time to use this artificial preparation of hemp. He was president when he wrote this letter to a doctor in England who sent him this artificial preparation of hemp. He said he'd have to make more time for that with the winding up of a session of Congress. You know, the very founders of our country were hemp farmers, and they would be shocked to see today that hemp was prohibited. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just sad. We have people, you know, getting together, you know, the pharmaceutical industry and the prison industry and the police industry all working together to ban a simple plan um, to, you know, to take away our freedoms, our freedom of choice, because, you know, people got to realize that, I think they also, they realize that if we're allowed to choose our own intoxicant, we'll make, we'll demand and make other choices for ourselves. That the government right now makes so many choices for us, doesn't allow us to choose, you know, everything um, that you can think of that, you know, that they can't allow us to choose our own intoxicant because then we'll start to think for ourselves. Um, and that prison, police, um, pharmaceutical industry just won't allow that. Yeah, yeah. When they uh, prohibited hemp, you know, I think that one of the key factors was the fact that hemp produces more oil and that than any other plant. It produces three times more oil than any other plant uh, seed oil crop that's available today. And that hemp seed oil will run any diesel engine with no conversion. In fact, the diesel engine, the first internal combustion engines, were invented to run on hemp seed oil back in 1884. And it was 15 years before they synthesized petroleum to be like hemp seed oil so that they could replace hemp seed oil. And the reason they wanted to replace it is because they can do that in a centralized math method. It takes millions of dollars to find oil and produce uh, mm -hmm. petroleum. It takes billions to refine it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very um, capital-intensive industry. And then once you've already invested in that, you're not going to want to let go of it. So you want to you know, make sure you're going to you know, give money to your favorite congressmen and senators who will vote your way um, to keep on the prohibition of, of uh, cannabis. Um, it's very, very labor-intensive, um, capital-intensive, not labor-intensive, but capital-intensive. And it's just it's sort of insidious the way it has grown up and stopped all research into uh, modern-day industrial applications of, of cannabis and its byproducts. Like a whole exploding field in the 20s um, and early 30s was finding all these wonderful new uses for cannabis. They just kind of stopped cold in the tracks from these, you know, the, the oil people and the pharmaceutical people. Um, they're out there, you know, and just saying, no, you can't, you can't have it. And they got together with the Bureau of Narcotics um, in the U.S. and put a stop to it and, and put all this propaganda so people would forget that it was ever a beneficial plan. They totally yeah. separate the beneficial uses from, you know, the, uh, um, I don't know, well, they made up a whole misinformation yeah. campaign. They said that marijuana caused people to go crazy and kill their family and friends. And in fact, it doesn't do that. We know that today. But they made up this propaganda misinformation campaign so they could prohibit it. At the time, you know, Henry Ford had invented a car that the body was made from hemp fiber and hemp seed oil. They fire and it was like fiberglass today. And I've seen old videotapes from the mm. 20s and early 30s where they take a sledgehammer and they swing it down onto the car. It doesn't make a scratch. It doesn't make a dent in that vehicle. Henry Ford had synthesized a car made with hemp fiber. The entire body was. And that's another one of the reasons it's prohibited. You know, it's all about money. It has nothing to do with drugs. The drug issue is, pardon the pun, a smokescreen. And it's meant to detract from the real issue. Fortunately, today, it's this prison industrial complex mm -hmm. where we see more people in jail than any other country in the history of the world. And, uh, and this destruction of our civil liberties and the intrusion into our bedrooms. 
They not even, not only do they intrude into our bedrooms and our homes to see what we're using, they'll test our urine and test our hair and try to say that we're using an illegal herb. Now, this is an herb that people have used for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, and there's no, you know, and with very little harmful effects, no harmful effects. I mean, you know, as people like, it's like drinking a martini after work at your home. You, know, you put your feet up and turn on the TV set and drink your martini. Well, a lot of people do the same thing with, with cannabis. Put their feet up, turn on TV, and roll themselves a, a, you know, a joint. Um, and that's all we're saying is give people that choice. So whether, you know, they can choose the intoxication, the intoxicant they like, um, so they can choose the medicine that they like and prefer, and they can grow the crops that they like and prefer. And use the paper that makes more paper than trees do. According to USDA Bulletin 404, hemp produces four times more paper than the most productive tree species. That's a waste product for making canvas, rope, lace, and linen, and protein, and oil. We need you to call us. We need you to get this petition. We need to put this important issue before the voters so we can start the real debate and let the people know what is really going on here and stop the buildup of the prison industrial complex here in the United States. Call us at 235-4606. You know, we say that a lot. We hate to be redundant. We don't want to bore you, but that's why we're here. We're trying to put this on the ballot. We need your help to do it. So call us now. Don't delay. Call us right away. We have a big voicemail system. You'll probably get bumped over to that, but call us at 235-4606. If you're really in a hurry, go to the World Wide Web, the Internet, and look up there at www.crrh.org. Get your pencil, write down that address right across the bottom of the screen because yeah. we need your help. You know, and as we, as we say, don't be intimidated by the 15 uh, slots there for names and signatures on our petition. Um, even one is great. We need, you know, everybody to help out here. And you may, you know, be the only one in your family who wants to sign this or you're among your friends. I mean, I'll be out there petitioning and be one guy of a group of friends will come over and sign it. And the rest of his friends won't, you know, which, well, I'm happy, but maybe he can educate his friends. And so he'll sign it next time. Unfortunately, a lot of people are afraid to sign it. They think their names are going to go on some list. I can tell you that if we don't get enough signatures, we're not even going to turn it in. But uh, if we do get enough signatures, we turn it into the Secretary of State's office, then they only keep it for 60 days to validate that the people who signed it, only 2% of the people who signed it, are registered voters. So that's what uh, they do. They aren't checking it to see where you live. They aren't putting it on some master police list. It's going just to validate that people who sign it are registered Oregon voters. And that's what we need your help to do. Call us one more time, 235-4606. That's right, 503-235-4606. And call us today. We'll mail out to you in a, brown, in a plain brown envelope. Um, and we need your help. You know, help yourself. That's a big thing. You know, help win back your own freedoms. Yeah. You know, hemp grows more in a single season than any other crop in the temperate and cooler climates. It produces more fiber, protein, and oil than any other plant on this planet. And to prohibit the plant that produces more fiber, protein, and oil than any other plant, that, to me, is truly evil. So help us put this on the ballot. We'd like to thank Lanny Swerdlow and his club in downtown Portland, Evolution, uh, for, for taping our shows and helping put this on the air. Thanks for watching. Good night. Thanks, Paul.